What do the prophets all see Jesus would do when he come and rule the nations with a rebellion? Is that right? They fail to see his first coming to the Gentiles. When he returns, then he does rule all nations. He will come. He isn't up on his throne now. He's sitting on God's throne. He that overcomes shall sit with me on my throne as I have overcome and sat on my father's throne. Now he's wanting to come back and who, where is his earthly throne? The throne of David. God said he'd give them the throne of David in the millennium. He'll sit on David's throne and will see him, the great king of kings, sitting there. There he is now. He's sitting on his father's throne. In other words, he's sitting in God's power in spirit now. But when he comes back, he'll sit in an earthly body, hallelujah, on David's throne. Now he's sitting in the majesty of Father now. When you say Father, it's Jesus. It's a spirit of God by the Holy Spirit in us now. He's on his Father's throne. Right hand of majesty, we use the body name Jesus Christ who appeared, the Holy Spirit who is God. Whatever you ask the Father in my name, that will I do. For I and the Father, my Father, are one. Yeah, a little while, and the world will see me no more. That's the body will be taken away. But you'll see me, for I'll be with you even in you to the end of the world. That's Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, he will return in his body again, and he will sit on a little throne, a man that will eat and drink and shake hands. Glory, oh my. That you say we are too emotional, brother. Why, it makes you emotional. You can't hold yourself when I think of it. How could you stand at a ball game or something that you like real well and just, you fishermen, how could you catch a great big bus, about five pounds, and oh, that's a green, sure, something's happened. And when you really get saved and filled with the Holy Ghost, something happens. When the Word of God begins to manifest, for we are setting together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus and the Holy Spirit teaching us and guiding us and setting us in order. What a wonderful time. Now watch. Rule all nations with the rod of iron. And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with the rod of iron. And her man-child was caught up unto God and to his throne. Now watch. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she had a place prepared of God, a wilderness, a church now that she should be fed a thousand two hundred and three score days, which we had it in the Hebrews. We'll get back on this maybe tonight. I'd like to prove from the persecution of the church and all through those dark ages, the people come over here. What is American? America was established at Plymouth Rock for one purpose, freedom of religion. Is that right? And the Bible said that she fled from the dragon and had a place prepared in the what? Conscious his wilderness. What was America when she came here, see, where she was nourished for limited time, a time, time and dividing, just about 165 or 70 years, where she has a place prepared. And then this nation raised up and formed images to the beast and spoke like the beast did to the confederation of organized church religion. Now the church is getting so she can't have a freedom no more. We will shut down the bunch of holy rollers, stop that stuff. We'll unionize the thing and make an organization. And then what are they doing? Forming an image to the beast. Every time they make a little power, we are the Methodists, we are the Baptists, we are the Nazarenes, we are the Pentecostal. We form our own, we got our own council churches. We got this, you say Pentecostals, yes sir. The sons of God, the mightiest of all the Pentecostals belongs to the Confederation of Church. She's just as much in the image of the beast as they are. Now you see, Catholic, we chop these Pentecostals up too, because the word of God says so. See what I mean? We can only be honest. This is the truth, brother, because God, not because I'm saying it, because he said it. I'm just using his word, just speaking it to you, see? And the only way I know how to put it together, I don't. I just have to stand here and let him put him together. Then he gives it out. And you receive it and then just take it and then watch it heap up and come that way just the same thing about healing or anything else it's god's spirit moving it just brings it right to pass see now watch and the woman fled into the wilderness where she had a place prepared of god god prepared america for freedom of religion that she should be fed there a thousand two hundred and three score days and there was war in heaven michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon fought against the his angels 
the dragon. Who was the dragon? Conscience is Satan. Satan. And what nation did it represent? Conscience is Rome. And he had angels. Didn't the Bible say that in the last days that the men saying spirits of the devil will be like flaming angels? But if they speak not according to this, let them alone. The devil will transform his messengers into angels of light and organize right back just exactly like Rome did. Brother, sister, I don't see where you could find a loophole in that. God has just got it all walled up there, right here in his word. And there it is. And he said he did. Now watch. And Michael, the archangel, the great one that stands in the presence of God and his angels fought against Satan and his angels, the red dragon. And that was a church that's led by the Holy Spirit and the angels of God fought against the organizations and its angels and ministers of light. See how perfect? It's just perfect. If they are speaking not of something up into glory, it's speaking of spiritual things in Rome. The red dragon that stood before the woman to devour her child now and they prevail not. Neither was they are found place any more for them in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. That Roman power going into every nation, that city that rules all over the earth, he deceived it. Many churches organizing just like him, see, making an image unto the beast, and was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. See, they don't have a conception of the scripture. Look, when the ark enemy met Jesus Christ, when he first met him, he didn't go with him just a roundabout way. He met Jesus out there and he said, now, where's his weakest spot? It's his stomach right now because he's been fasting. He said, if thou be the son of God, I want you to perform a miracle for me. Now, I know the scriptures and I want you to perform a miracle. Tell me that you are this. Well, this miracle worker, if you're the son of God, turn these stones into bread, eat, and then I'll believe you. Now, look at that same anointing on preachers today. See, if that guy is a divine healer, if that church believes in divine healing, let him heal this one. I'll believe it, see. What it is, it's a devil. Jesus turned to him in the scriptures, said it's written, that man shall not live by bread alone, but by, you don't have to clown for this devil, see. And I watch, the devil said, I'll fix him if I can get him up on top of the temple. He said, now look. You are setting up here on top of the temple, now looking right over Jerusalem. Now cast yourself down, and just before you hit the ground, then the angels will bear you up, for it's written in the word. Yes, I quoted scripture. Satan did. Don't tell me them guys can't quote scripture. You better know where you're standing. Yes, sir. Fundamental, as they could be. He said, all right, Polish scholar. But know sometimes no more about God than hot and hot would know about an Egyptian knight. He said, when he cast down the cell, said, it's written. He'll give his angels charge concerning, if you're the son of God, and the Bible said, the scripture said, if you're the son of God, jump off this temple, because the angels has got a hold of you all time. You can heal whenever you want to. You can do whatever you want to, because the Bible says so. Jesus said, yes. And it's also written, and there it goes, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. That's right, oh my Satan said, I'll get him this time then. Look, look up there on top of this. Look here. All these kingdoms, the United States of America coming up. Great and mighty nation. Here is Rome now. Here's all these nations around here. Here's Italy. Here's France. Here's Germany, Belgium. There's all these nations of the world, the world over, said they are mine. That's right. That's who governs them. The devil governs the United States. All you say. Oh, that can't be. Oh, it does. And the Bible said he did. He said, these are mine. He said, I do with them whatever I want to. I'm quoting scripture. Jesus never denied it. He said, I'll give them every one of to you if you'll just worship me right here. If you'll say I'm right, agree with me in the scripture. You know, I'm a teacher. I have a big seminary, whole lot of angels out here. And if you'll just agree with me, I'll give them everyone to you. Let you be the ruler. Jesus said, get thee behind hand, Satan. That's right. Don't tempt me. He walked around there and angels come and minister to him. What is it? Jesus knew that he was going to fall heir to every one of them. Anyhow, he is going to be heir in the millennium. Every nation of this world will be broken, ground to pieces. And Jesus Christ will be the king of the world, king of kings and lord of lords. He couldn't rule in such a condition as that. He's going to rule in peace, will rule and reign in every heart. 
and love without alloy when jesus shall return to earth again is going to be his anyhow he didn't have to burden to satan no now watch quickly and i heard a loud voice saying from heaven now is become salvation now is become strength and the king's kingdoms of our god and the power of his christ for the accuser of our brethren is cast down which accused them before god day and night and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the testimony all right and they loved not their lives unto death and therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell on in the earth woe unto the inhabitants of the earth for thou and the sea for the devil is come down unto you having great wrath because he knoweth that he has but a short time now you can see where he's roaring about so deceitful acting like an organized himself up and bringing people and polish it up did you know where polish and all that first came from it originated by the devil in the heavens where the devil the first thing he wanted was to make a kingdom that outshined michael big watch cain his son when cain come into existence he fixed his altar as it was on easter morning with beautiful flowers he fixed it all pretty and put the very polished fruit and laid that upon the altar and made everything so pretty he said surely god will receive that isn't it beautiful now look at that same nature in the church today see won't god receive us if our pastor has a degree of he knows how to speak very fluently good english and eloquent speaking man won't the best class of the city come to us look at our great shrine look at our great crosses look at our fine pew look at our thousands of dollars organ and look at all these things here that we got and a nice polished and a dick on the businessman of the city surely they'll come to us the same old devil when god looked down he said there's nothing in it that's right and here come abel raging rugged pulling a little old lamb behind him with a grapevine wrapped around his neck led him up on the altar and took a rock and began to chop him like that and the blood began to fly and the lamb bleating and crying god said that's it abel amen and that's it abel through the shedding of the blood cleansing amen i feel like a holy roller this morning i really do notice back to hebrews right quick the law having a shadow of good things to come and not the very watch and not the very image of the things not the see just a shadow of it not the very image of the things can never let's see not the very image of the things can never with those sacrifices they offered ear by ear continually make the comma they are perfect now the law having a shadow of the good things to come can never make the comma perfect now did the bible see then if that if the law could not make perfect then the bible speaks that there can be a perfection do you believe there's a perfection let's turn to saint matthew the fifth chapter i believe and the 40 about the 40th verse and see if you can find that i believe that's about right if i'm not mistaken matthew just so i can read it with for you the fifth and 40 just that's it just exactly jesus speaking in the beatitudes be therefore perfect even as your father which is in heaven is perfect how are you going to do it be ye perfect as your father has and those sacrificing under the law could not make the karma perfect why now watch just a little while for then would not they have not have ceased if they'd made the karma perfect then they would not have ceased they've kept on with the law see because that the worshiper my did you read this look here for the worshiper the lady the worshiper once purged should have no more conscience of sin phew what's happening to you out there then what are you carrying on fussing with your neighbor about the bible said the worshiper once purged has no more conscience of sin phew what kind of strong doctrine isn't it now this week you haven't been fed on the skill make anyhow you see We've been in deep things and reached and you've took it very nice and i thank god for you i just want to come back and teach some more to you see because you're able to take it see now notice the worshiper once purged said now the law couldn't do it but in this test it though said if the law could have done it then jesus wouldn't have had to die but there is the worshiper then he come watch if you watch here a little 
father, I believe, but these sacrifices, which a remembrance was made of sin every year, for it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sin. Why? How much time we got? Oh my, just a little bit. We'll close, then we'll start up again tonight. Cause I told you I'd quit. Look, let's take it just in a little type quickly. The worshiper once purged has no more conscience of sin. Jesus said, be perfect even as the Father in heaven is perfect. Here's the Old Testament out there. The worshiper comes, he knows he's done something wrong. He goes out and hands him a lamb with a spot, brings it to it, wash it in the lava, brings in the high priest stands at the altar here, the priest, and then the high priest stands at the altar and he takes the lamb, he examines it over, there's not a blemish on it, nowhere. Then the lamb is laid upon the altar, the worshiper puts his hands upon the lamb and said, I confess my sins that I've broke the Sabbath, I've done this, that, or the other, I've sinned, I've done something wrong. And the priest kills the lamb, catches the blood, puts it over here, and burns it as a sacrifice on the brass altar, which means divine judgment. And as the smoke went up, Israel fell on its knees and gave their prayers as it went up on the smoke of the burnt blood, threw blood on fire, and watched it express. Now this great cupola went the smoke up, and all Israel in thousands of trumpets sounded, and every man dropped everything he had and went to prayer. All right? Three times a day that was made, the worshiper then went back out with the same design in his heart, maybe come in for committing adultery. And he said, Lord, I did wrong. I committed adultery. I've got to die. Because you said that if you sin, you're going to die. So this innocent lamb will die in my place. So I offer you my lamb. I paid my money for it. So I come in and offer you my lamb as I confess my sins. And this lamb is taking my place. An innocent substitute. I ought to die. You was going to kill me, but you told me if I'd give this lamb and let this lamb die in my place, then I could go free. Then he cut his throat, got his blood, drawed it on the brazen divine altar judgment, and the blood smoke went out to God, and God received it, said, I'll receive it. The man walked right back out there with the very same lust in his heart, commit another adultery, that's right. But in this place where Jesus is, the Lamb of God, why? the germ of life is in the bathroom, and that was an animal life. And an animal blood has no conscience of sin, certainly not. So it wasn't strong enough because it knew not what sin was. But when God came down into the blood cell that was in Mary's womb and that pitted the blood in Christ Jesus, that human blood was powerful enough to take sin out of the human heart. And when the worshiper comes and puts his hands on Jesus' head and confesses his sin and the lamb was killed and his name's written on the Lamb's Book of Life, then God gives him the very, the same Holy Spirit was in that blood and he confesses his sins wrong. He has no more desire of sin. Amen. How that's the gospel. No more desire of sin. Then the worshiper walked out with a clean heart. The worshiper, the law being a shadow, but in Christ, it was taken away. He taken away the first so he could add the second. He couldn't have two at the same time. You can't have the law that says it's a five dollar fine to run the street light out here, and the next one says that you can go free. You can't do it. You couldn't put judgment. So judgment is based upon something, not upon a lamb, upon Christ. Christ, a son of God, who was God manifested in the flesh, and the germ of life that came into the womb of Mary, that developed that cell, cell after cell had been brought forth this body that shed blood yonder in order that God could be made blood. And the Bible said we are saved through the blood of God. I used to say that I was saved by Jewish blood. There was not one spot of Jewish blood in his body. He was neither Jew nor Gentile. He was God. There's not one drop of the mother's blood in a baby. Ask your doctor. It's all wrapped in the mother's blood, but not the mother can that's got TB can die in childbirth with TB, and the baby taken forth, as long as it don't catch her breath, it won't have TB, you see? The blood is in the middle. A hen can lay an egg, but if she hasn't been with a rooster, it'll never hatch. It is infertile. It hasn't got any blood in it. And that's just like many times I've said, a lot of these old churches around here, 
you got a bunch of eggs all right but they lay right there and rot unless they got to be with the meat Christ Jesus been born again and filled with the Holy Ghost then they've got life and they believe oh you see we've got eggs I know you have what good does it do them you can hover them with the gospel preach the Holy Ghost to them they walk out and say hmm I don't believe on that stuff and Indiana and Kentucky is jammed full of it look over here when we was having a healing service in Louisville standing there preaching oh everybody would like to see the healing and the miracles and so forth but I went to laying out the gospel walked out I don't believe no such stuff as that my church don't believe that there you are the mark of the beast you can't receive it you're blind they lay the gospel out tell them what the rotten eggs are laying there can't have no life how are you going to put life in one of them eggs when it ain't got no life in it and the male Christ Jesus brought life through the blood of God is that right brought the life of God down into the mill and that's right Jesus Christ the Son of God come down to bring life to the human race is that right and in him after his blood being shed and the Holy Spirit coming in the blood of Jesus Christ which was that blood cell when it was offered at Calvary it takes away the very desire of sin so if you still have the desire of sin better come back to the altar again that's right now and that same life that was in that blood cell returns back into your blood cell and gives you the same life Jesus said I give them eternal life now if you are interested in Greek words go look up and see what the Greek word eternal means it comes from the word Zoe Z O E look what Zoe is Zoe is a life of God himself and if Jesus through his death give up his own life which was Zoe we have eternal life and can perish hallelujah then when the old flesh begins to last after things the spirit says no there now here it is get your gospel quotes on look Romans 8 1 and there is therefore now no condemnation to them that in Christ Jesus are walk not after the flesh but after the spirit spirit giveth life letter killeth what a beautiful lesson wish we had time to continue well we will after a bit look God required life the very first time sin was committed and if you notice the pair in Garden of Eden substituted animal life did you notice it put animal life went out and got sheep and killed them and they made garments to cover the sin up with is that right sheepskin let's take a little drama I seen a picture not long ago that I like just not it's just meant a picture I never seen it drawn I see our mother Eve and our father Adam and the colored man sitting there the Chinese sitting there this will shock you every human being the pygmy in Africa the Bushmen up in the Transvaal the heathen that don't know which is right and left hand with hair sticking out of there all over him like that as well as an animal he's got the same blood veins in his veins that you got the Chinese can go down and take the blood plasma and give it to a white man the colored man the same blood that's in his veins is in the white man's veins they can give blood one to another but there's not one animal that can give a blood plasma why God has made of all nations one blood exactly every one of us come off of that same tree of life to Almighty God whether you're yellow brown black or whatever you are we are one blood ask your doctor now if that's right white colored no matter who you are brown or whatever you are don't make any difference Chinese Japanese Negro whatever you may be don't have one thing to do with it you got the same blood and the same Jesus Christ died for one and died for all God tore down the middle wall of partition and made us all in Christ Jesus what a message for that there stood Adam and Eve Eve a beautiful woman oh my I can see her there Adam with his with them dark shaggy locks hanging down around his head those bright flashy eyes look over to the little sweetheart Eve and such a perfect built woman her hair looked up and her eyes as blue as the sky Adam loved her oh how he loved her but when sin entered in the little home was broken up because of an old lustful beast the devil had got into an animal called the serpent not a reptile remember the Bible doesn't say that the devil was a snake he wasn't a snake in the beginning the snake 
wasn't like he is now in the beginning. The curse put him where he's at. The Bible said he was not a reptile. He was a beast and the most subtle of all the beasts in the field. He looked more like a man than anything you ever had. Walked upright. That's where the devils got in him and come to Eve, this beautiful maid woman, and she did what was wrong. Take your idea of it. I got mine. All right, now. Then she brought forth her first son, Cain, the nature after the daddy, a murderer, a hater, so forth. Notice, then what taking place after that? Then when God came down to talk, fellowship had been broken. Could you imagine Adam and Eve setting out in the Garden of Eden under them and great palm trees? God would have come down, say, My children, yes, Father, is all well, all is well. Have you enjoyed the blessings of your father this day? Yes, Father, we've enjoyed. Here comes Leo, the lion up. Leo meows like a kitten. Adam pats him on the head. He kneels himself down. Here comes Cheetah, the tiger, and all them comes up, lays down, meows around, and God's great voice roaring through the top of them trees. My creation, have you enjoyed what your father has given you this day? Yes, father, every day. No death, no sorrow, that is, that's the way. God said, oh, isn't this wonderful? And then Michael looked over and said, I could do that too. Oh, brother. Don't get yourself contrary to God's word. That's what the matter with these churches today. I can make an organization too, as big as they are. Oh, get away from it. Stay with God's word, yes, sir. Let God sing. God was the one speaking. And then the first thing you know, then when she sinned, then God came down and roared to the top of the trees. He wants to be worshipped. He's God. And his children wasn't there to worship. Here come Leo up and knelt down, and here come Cheetah up and knelt down, and all of them come up to kneel down. But where's Adam? He said, Cheetah, have you seen Adam? No. Leo, you seen? No. Adam, where art thou? I see the nature of a man. He ran from God. It ought have been Adam saying, Father, I've sinned. I've done wrong. Where are you? I know I want to confess my sins. Where are you, Father? But he was hiding, getting back in the behind the curtains. You see, Adam, where art thou? My boy, Adam, Adam. My boy, where are you? Directly, he looked down and he seen Adam standing behind the bushes. Said, come out, Adam. He said, I can't, I'm naked. Said, who told you you were naked? He said, the woman you give me. And the woman said, the serpent did it. There you are. Then the great picture of the fellowship was broken. God can't talk to his people no more. He done said so. When God speaks, he's got to keep his word. He's got to. All right, he said, I got to talk to him. So God went over and got some sheepskins, brought them, old bloody sheepskins, back, threw them back in the bushes, said, put them on. Here come Adam and Eve wrapped up in these old sheepskins. They made themselves a religion first. They joined a church somewhere thought they were going to get by with a fig leaf church. You know, just hide behind something. But when they went to stand in the presence of God, their fig leaf religion didn't hold out. But here he comes out with blood running down over his mandy shoulders. Look at little Eve. Let's draw a picture. That pretty little thing, Adam's sweetheart and wife, his darling. And there, here she comes out and the blood running down her legs. Whereas, uh, here's Adam with the blood running off of his shoulders. I see around his collar here, where it wrapped around his shoulders, the blood shagging in his hair. Him, look at little Eve, her head bent down, them old bloody sheepskins walk out before God, said, Adam, because you listen to your wife instead of me, I take you from the dust of the earth, and dust you'll return. Said woman, because you listen to the serpent instead of your own husband, see, church, who is supposed to listen to your husband. Not to some creed, but to your husband. Here's his word to you, see. Because you listened to the serpent instead of your husband, wish I could stay a little while on that. I feel something there, see. So why you listened to the serpent instead of your husband? You took life out of the world. You'll bring life in the world. And I'll multiply your sorrows and your conceptions. Your desire shall be to your husband. And serpent, because... You did this, 
off goes your legs and you'll crawl on your belly all the days of your life. You'll be hated by all and the dust shall be your meat. Oh my, something's happening. Ick is aches begin to come into Eve's shoulders. Adam's got a rheumatism in his back. He begins to look, looks over to Eve. Tears are running down her pretty cheeks, her lips that will never have been to have manicure on them. Ever what that stuff they put on now. Never have to put that on. They were all pretty and red, but now they're running out pale. Wrinkles are coming in them. Wrinkles are coming in under her eyes. Adam's hairs begin slipping out. Shag be begin to come here, and greys are going to set in. Tears are dropping off of his manly chest. His chest has begun to sink in hollow. What a condition, mortal. Then little Eve knowed she was a cause of it, said, Oh, Adam. What have I done, darling? I'm going to preach on that one of these nights. What have I done? She leaned her little head over on his shoulders, striking him along about this. She said, honey, I'm the cause of it, and we are condemned. Look at us. We are turning back to the dust, and God hid his face from us now. We can't see him no more. Look at this old bloody. I'm ashamed to take this off before you are done. He said, darling, I wouldn't take this off before you for nothing. What's happened to us, honey? And he began to cry, and tears ran off of his cheeks. Own cheeks spurting on top of her head. He had run down to her bosom like that, mixing tears and blood, running together, and he puts his arm around his little wife. God said, depart out of my presence, and they sinned. He can't do nothing else. He's God. That's what makes his word so real. He's got to keep his word no matter how bad it hurt him and depart out of my presence. Adam put his arm around his little wife Eve like that. Here, they start moving down to the Garden of Eden. I can hear that old bloody sheepskin that was on Adam. He make a step going. Barbanum salt claps his hand several times, blood smacking against his legs as he walks on. God, there goes his boy, there goes his girl, just the same. It will be my Billy Paul and my Rebecca. There they go, your daughter and your son. What can he do? What can he do? He's God. He has to keep his word. I pronounced death on them, and I trusted them, and they thought they wouldn't do it. But they did it anyhow. Why did they do it? Then God conceived his thoughts. He said, I'll take their place. I'll die in their stead. That's my boy. I can't let him go like that. That's my girl. I'll die in his place. He said, just a minute. He said, I'll put enmity between thy seed and the serpent's seed, and your seed shall bruise the serpent's head. In other words, I will overshadow a virgin someday and come down and be made flesh myself, and I'll take the sinner's place. Man was made in the image of God, and then God was made in the image of man to redeem Man back to himself. God taken his place. That's how I know Jesus is God. That's right. Now let's change our scene. 19. Four thousand years has passed. We're in Jerusalem this morning. I hear a noise. What is it? I look outside sin. And the whole earth bathed with wars and rumors of wars and uh, blood and adultery and sin and shame and disgrace of the offsprings of that couple. Look down here, just like Herodias, 70 of her boys and girls died on gallows and in prostitution from sin. Look at Adam and Eve's children, how they are dying, dying, and the little old weak blood yonder somehow wouldn't atone. It's a animal blood, it ain't got no life in it. It can't come before God, that life that goes out of that blood, it can't come, because it's a damn brute. He's got to have some kind of a life that knows right from wrong. God come down now in flesh, and a virgin knows right from wrong. And now in Jerusalem, I hear a noise. What is it? Oh, away with him, crucify him. What is it? The very creator of the human race and his own children crying for his blood. There, God's own creation crying for his own blood. Well, now, if he'd have held himself and wouldn't have done it, his child would have been lost. Don't you see? That's Jehovah from the Garden of Eden. Can't you see him there, in veiled in his human flesh? Oh my, notice, little father, I wish you could get on this lesson.
a little further down there, he said, this tabernacle, Solomon built him a tabernacle, but the most high dwelleth not in houses made of hands, but a body has a prepared me. When Solomon built the temple, Jehovah, here is a good one, hallelujah, that caught just right. Thank the Lord for that. Here is a revelation, just fresh right now. You're going to get it. When Solomon built the temple, and it was dedicated, God came into that temple and dwelt there. Is that right? And when Jesus Christ was dedicated to God on the river of Jordan, God came down and dwelt in Jesus Christ, his Jehovah. Amen. Confession of sin always had to look to the temple. Confession of sin has to look to Christ. There is the temple of God. God dwelt in Christ. There he is now. You believe in Jehovah, don't you? Never thought of that before. Oh, sometimes... When you're moving along in a spirit and a move, setting together in heavenly places, how Christ can move in a church like that? See how the revelations move? There's a perfect revelation coming from God. He's standing at the platform now. I know that come from there. I know it did. The temple was where God dwelt. And if the people anywhere in trouble, like Jonah in the belly of the wheel, look towards the temple anywhere, that they look to this temple and pray, then on here, and now the temple of God was not made with hands. He said, you prepare me a building, but that wasn't it. But a body has not prepared me. That is God in Christ. Then I hear that howling mob to our sin. Look at him there. They are crying for his own blood. His own children are screaming out, away with him. Their creator, their God, their maker, their father, away with him. Now he's become the redeemer. Now they reject me. But if they don't know, they don't know who I am, they don't know that I'm the very one that pronounced this curse upon them yonder in the Garden of Eden. I've come to redeem them. If I refuse, why? I could speak, and the legions of angels would come to me. But if I would, they're going to be lost. And after all, I was the one who put the curse on them. Now i am come to take the curse off of them and let them, through their sins, crucify me. Here he goes, drugging through the street beat they backed him hooked him up to a post like this put a all cut or nine tails stood out there and beat till his ribs showed through he was a little man the bible said no beauty we should deserve him look at his body beaten driven bruised mockery spit from his own children spitting in the lady's face crown of thorns around his head tears and things mingle running down his body tears and blood running together spit dropping off here he comes we look at the window and see what he looks like there he goes i hear his old cross dragging down through the streets making a roaring bumping noise as it goes down his poor little body moving and they're walking along whipping him with a whip go on you holy roller we got our organization we got our churches we don't need you to come around and ball us out about our church you making yourself the god of the sabbath why don't you do something about it now, you all holy ruler and the very creator moving along there in flesh. There's that blood cell moving up, just bathing down his back. He moves a little further. Let's look. I notice over his back, he's got a robe through the cross, his shoulders, and it's wove throughout without seam. And look all over this robe. Now, a little white robe there becomes a little red spot it's that blood coming through his back where he was by his stripes we are healed oh could i deny that god keep me mentally right i don't care if it cost me blood what would my old dirty and adulterated blood be at the side of his there i see him moving as them watch as he goes up on up them spots get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger as he moves on. I see him fall. I see a colored man come across and help him bear the cross and put it up on his shoulder. He moves on. He can hardly move now. Look at him as he goes. And he's moving on. All the little spots run into one big spot. And after a while, I hear something now going. But Branham slowly claps his hands several times. What is it? It's that old bloody garment beating against his legs. What is it? Animal blood finished. There's a second Adam. There's the God of heaven. That's not animal blood. 
That's God's blood beating against in the legs. The second Adam going to die for the human race. God made Adam himself and living here on earth, going down to die for the human race. The blood of bulls and goats could not take away sin, but induced his own Jesus Christ to come and makes a worshiper perfect by the baptism of the Holy Ghost, who Jesus Christ died in his place at Calvary. Dear dying lime, the precious blood shall never lose its power till all the ransom church of God be saved to see no more. The dying thief rejoiced to see that fountain in his day. There may I, the vile as he, wash all my sins away. Ever since by faith I saw that stream, the flowing wounds supplied, redeeming love has been my theme, and shall be sure I die. Then in a nobler, sweeter song I'll sing the power to save, when this poor little spring salmon tongue lies silent in the grave. Our Heavenly Father, as we look to thee this morning, the Lamb of Calvary, the one who come in the shadows of the law to take away the law and to bring in this great dispensation of grace to give us the spirit in our own tabernacles here, God tabernacling with mortal beings, fellowshipping, God coming down to fellowship in the heart of man, came unto his own, his own received him not. As many received him, to them he gave the power to become sons of God. As many as call upon his name and by his spirit we are baptized into his body by the renewing of our thoughts, by the washing of the blood, by the water to bring us into fellowship with the great Son of God as there again when the evening is setting. O oh Christ, I'm not a boy no more. After a while my body's sun's going to set too and my hair is beginning to turn gray. My evening time is coming. Won't you let me talk to you then, Lord, when you come down in the top of the trees of life? Or let me have communion with you then, Father. And let me, as I look back down across this path that I've traveled, see where my footprints have has sent through the seas and over the briar patches and the rough places, crying, Holy unto the Lord. Grant it, Lord, may every person in the tabernacle this morning that's setting here under this divine unction of the Holy Spirit coming through the word, may even of them receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. May this little church divinely pull its cause together, settle its differences in our hearts right now, moving in as one heart and one person, as arms around each other, and moving away as brother and sister in God respects with an old fashioned kiss. Of salvation in their heart that will make them go home and weep at the table, weep at the bedside, put the children on their laps and weep for them, weep for the world, weep for the sins of the city and be marked into the kingdom of God at this near coming now in the future of our Lord Jesus. May at that day when the tape recording is played as it was from this morning's meeting, may every person here that I pray for today, hear Lord, may they all be standing there washed in the blood of the Lamb with palms in their hands singing Hosanna, Hosanna to him that sitteth upon the throne. Grant it, Lord, be thou with us, heal the sickness in our midst and draw all the little church together now. Lord, under the power of the Holy Spirit, be with us in the coming afternoon as we visit the sick and the needy, the shut in, help us in our homes as we go home. Not to be like a pig to sit down and eat, but maybe look up to the creator and say, Thank you, Lord Jesus, for giving to me this food. May we tonight not go to bed as unthankful children, but may on our knees we spend a long time in prayer and thanksgiving, rising tomorrow, saying, Father, I can't travel this day by myself. Take my hand now and lead me through the day. Oh, God grant it, and may the men and women that we come in contact with may it be in deep sincerity. May we speak of the orders of calls of God, Lord, not overbearing, but talk in wisdom that we might know how to win others to you. And that great day, thou wilt say, It's well done, my good and faithful servant. Enter into the joys of the Lord. Grant this, Father, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>